People are quiet. You don't like to talk about this in church. You, and you did not respond. You did not respond. I don't know. You don't want me to keep it real. Amen. It's for singles and married. And, you know, teenagers usually face this issue also. By the time they get to puberty, you know, their body begins to respond, and then no one actually would take time to teach them. So they end up running into error by ESAs, by whatever, okay, what do you think? Even from their peers. You know, I was making a study of this King, King Rehoboam, right? He said the elders, the people, they came to him and said, lighten the burden that your father gave, uh, put on us, and we will serve you. I said, wow. I said, okay, after three days, they should come back. Then he called his friends that they grew up together and were serving him. He said, what do you think I should do? And then they told him, ah, ah, increase it, double it. If your father used whip, you use scorpion. And after three days, they came with Jeroboam and he said the same thing to them. And they said, ah, ah, what are we, are we, are we, are we what's happening here? They just went, everyone said to your tent, oh, he said, they said, who is David gone? Who is the son of Jesse? They left him. Because sometimes, most times, we end up with wrong advice. Anyone that is able to give you advice does not mean that person is a good advisor. We have a lot of advisors that they are not well and old. And they are giving you advice to make you well and old. Can someone that is not well make you well? It is a doctor that is in his right senses and is okay that can treat you. Have you been to the clinic before that the doctor that wants to attend to you is not well? Do you think he will attend to you? He said, doctor, just try and get up and attend to me. In fact, you must be the one that must be checked. Because how will you be expecting someone that is not well, right, to attend to you? And funny enough, that is what we do. Even when it comes to marriage. Sometimes you don't know what to do. It's your friend that you call. What do you think? Who do you think I should marry? You know, last week I was giving you, a, I gave you an uh, example of the story of my life when my friends were saying, mommy, 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 and I was like, oh, I don't have mommy. Then I went to my dad, 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 you should marry. He said, oh, who should I marry? I chose one person. And he trusted that judgment. So along the line, during the marriage, there was one, you know, sometimes my second would just, I just, ah, no, just the one day I was just, I was just all over, I was angry, I was, so my dad called me, boy, you are the one that said I should marry her. And in my head, I'm like, ah. <laughs> I said, so it's my advice, you, <laughs> you heeded my advice, number five of your children. <laughs> ah, I must be powerful, oh. And at that point, I was almost feeling like, I don't understand marriage. And you took a lifetime decision on my advice. So a lot of people give the advice they don't know anything about. That is why when you're talking to people, when you're saying, do you understand? You must be very careful. You must know whose advice you want to hear to. It's very important. Say, I'm my guy, in they watch my back. The guy will no feel watching your own back. You know, if you fall my hand. Now God know the fall hand, though. Only God. And it's the depth of all wisdom, of all knowledge and understanding. How many of these things have you actually yielded to that has landed you where you are? I was going to delve a little into in-laws, but I'll do that next week. Because, you know, we said sex, intimacy, money, right? And relationships. These are major things that affect homes and marriages. I was having my bath this morning and I just kept thinking. And the Holy Spirit said, do you know that most people who would say that, my in-law did this, my in-law did that, 
It's my in-law, it's my in-law. They, they forgot that they are also in-laws. And their in-law that they are reporting is also saying my in-law. Do you understand? Please, I need three people. Come out quickly. Let's go, let's go. Because this time, we'll be moving quickly. Three people. Let's say she's a mother-in-law. See, I have a mother-in-law. So don't say, ah, maybe she doesn't have that. That's why she's teaching. Mm -mm. I have a sweet mother-in-law. So um, here is, let's, let's her represent mother-in-law, right? Let her represent daughter-in-law. Let him represent husband. So you are the mother, right? His mother. Be in their middle. Be in their middle. I like this. Because sometimes this is the case. It should be like, the, no, no, no. I mean, it should be here. So sometimes it's the case like the man is torn in between the wife and his mother. Are we real? Should we make it real? Beautiful. So now you gave birth to him. She suck your breast nine months. I'll be three months. Ah, uh, three years. It's, uh, it's, it's three years now. You hear some. So my father. Uh, Oh, no, I back you for three years, Abby. Mm -hmm. I back you. So how many months? Now? You people are, you are reduced these things. No wonder children are, they don't even send you again. Amen. It's cow's milk they are drinking now. Amen. But please breastfeed properly is important. Six months ex exclusive. So here is the mother. And you know, she knew him right from the womb. When he started the kicks. Do you understand? There is that connection. There is that bond. He might not even know, but she would understand the reading. Do you understand? Everything. That's it. The way he kept growing. The way he grew. Age one, two, the first day at school. They were all imprinted in her memory. Do you understand? And God still said, even if a mother will forget as a clean child, I will not forget you. Do you understand the kind of love God has for you now? It's much more than that. Because it's that father, mother, and child, they are in separate. Mm. Mm. I feel her. All right, I will not talk too much. <laughs> so, here. And he's of age, he wants to get married. His wife is in the children's church. He's married. So, you don't say that, ah, PF has used, that, uh, used him as an example. He's like, he's ready to be caught. This one has been hooked. Amen. Amen. All right. So it was ready. Do you understand? Then the wife comes along. But God placed the balance so that it's not the question of, um, some of us, we have those reading. They say, if you want to cross a river, have you heard? Or somebody wants to drown. Your mother is in the boat. Three of you are in the boat. <laughs> so they are in the boat in a particular situation. Maybe financial situation. The mother needs... Uh, money and then the wife needs money and you go you need money and the, oh, everything you have is just only to solve one problem so they will ask you whose problem will you solve have you ever asked that person that question like, who generated this question because that person is a problem causer and that person does not have enough knowledge to understand that the bible records that the husband and the wife will become one that places a balance and not say that you are torn in between two people. The moment you are beginning to think that, then you do not have a balanced weight for your marriage. You do not have a balanced weight of knowledge for your marriage. The balance is that two will become one. So whatever you do to your wife, you do to you. Like I said, that you also need money. Anything comes with to, is together is one. And most of the time when you're in a very difficult situation, you and somebody else is in a difficult situation, who would you say first? I mean you and then someone else. Who would you say first? Yourself. yourself. Because if you don't save yourself, you will not be alive to save that person. As a matter of fact, it will be a journey in futility. Do you get that? So the knowledge is that, hey, my wife, whatever it is that she wants to use, but it's not selfish. It's for both of you. It's for the marriage. Are you aware that she will have children? And then you're able to say, oh, darling, mama said she needs this. And you need this. Is there a way we can manage? Is there a way we can split it? Do you understand? 
But because you do not understand that uh, we are one, we are one, we are one, you find it difficult to relate with your wife, to tell the whole thing to her. And then she finds it difficult because she doesn't understand that she's one with her husband. She's one with her because when God sees you, he sees both of you together. He doesn't see you separately. And that is to break the jinx or the, the, the way of life when you say, hey, my husband likes, let him know pray. Let me shout pray. I know God will answer my prayer. You are not, that prayer did not leave that room. Trust me. If, I, if you call it war room, tag it war room. Tag it fire room. Tag it the AC of every room. Nothing, no words will pass because they where two or three people are gathered. And they said, and if any two of you will agree as touching anything, trust me. Oh, honey, oh, this is the little we have. Let's pray. God will just, God will open the door. God will help us. Oh, and so, 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 I'm thinking of, in the place of prayer, ideas will come. Who to ask will come. Uh, you know, business to do and all of that will come. And then you begin to talk. See, when it comes to finance, when it comes to increase, when it comes to, it has to do with agreement. You don't follow the mindset that a woman does not know how to manage money, so you keep hiding your money. Or the woman that says, your money, my dear husband, is our money. But my money is my money. And because you want to define what responsibility is, you put everything on him. Even when he says he doesn't have, you don't believe him. Maybe because he has done it before. <laughs> like he kept saying, honey, me, olowo. I don't have money. They are seeing things coming. Ah. Guy, you say you don't have money. Me, olowo. That means your me, olowo, is I have money. Amen. Amen. And that is to tell you, don't live a life of double standard so that you'll be believed. Do you understand? So that people can trust you. These are some of the things that shake the foundation of trust in homes. You say, oh, no, I'm just joking with you. Mm -mm. You don't joke with that kind of thing. Stop joking. Amen. Amen. Stop. Amen. Do you understand? So it has to come with that fulfillment. And funny enough, both of them, understand, let's say, they understand that right now, right? Okay, we are one and all of that. But if the mother does not understand and say, ah, my child, I've been asking you all this while. And I know the suffer that I suffer on your head, though. That's the literal Yoruba interpretation. And I know how I suffered for you. How I suffered, I sold a carafe just for you to go to school. You know? I sold my clothes. I sold my car. I sold my gold. It was grandma's gift just for you. I'm just asking you for this and you can give it to me. There must be a general knowledge that everyone should have about marriage. Because I noticed that not all in-laws, I mean mother-in-law, father-in-law, uncle-in-law, sister-in-law, aunties-in-law, you know. Some of you say, that uncle, he stayed with my father. Now that he's married, his wife did not let us see him again. You occupy a position as an in-law. They are auntie, big auntie. Amen. So there is that understanding that, hey, this is now a daughter in my house. I must take care of her as my daughter. Are you with me? I must take care of him just like my son. She's also my what? My daughter. So you can't afford to want to put asunder. The Bible said that Jesus, Jesus himself said it. Therefore, whoever the Lord has joined together, let no man put. So you can't afford to put asunder and say, hey, you are a visitor in this home. If you fell affair. Amen. Amen. Now marry we marry you. And the truth is, marriage means a relationship that births sonship. Are you with me? It is automatic. That is why Jesus Christ, uh, the Apostle Paul will say that as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, and that the church is the bride of Christ. Do you understand what marriage does now? Because by Christ, we are now sons of God. Do you get it? So anytime you have an incoming bride or groom 
into that family, that person automatically becomes a child, a son, a daughter in the house. Not an external person anymore. That is why usually there's a change of name. Do you get that? To say this person is now born into a family, but you must treat that person as a newborn babe. I say, but she's supposed to know. She, she does not even understand how your family works in the first place. So it must come with patience, with understanding. No wonder our pastor said, let the, where the older women teach the world to younger women. Come close, my daughter. This is how you should. There must be a teaching. There must be love. There must be that expression of grace. But not all, like I'm saying again, not all know this secret. Because that is what marriage is about. And so your dealing with her should be like that of a what? Mother and child and daughter. Not mother and daughter in law. Because law comes with fighting for right. If you hold on to that law, you always fight for your right. I am the wife here. Yes, you are the mother. Stay on your lane as the mother. You know, we have some mother. Oh, call me. Oh, call me. Oh, call me. Well, I'm not going to that one today. Like I said, it's just a... Amen. It's just a diversion. So, here must be a balance. Ah, mommy, ah, ba, 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 ba. And then you just give the little, ah, I'll still try to do more. But total neglect or putting them in the full, uh, in the, in the, you cut them off. No communication, nothing is not a way to build your home. Because if his mother did not give birth to him, will you marry him? You will not. Amen. You can have your sister. I still have a lot, but just, please. There must be a balance of we are what? We are one. Are you listening to me? And like I said, the only thing you can do, especially when your husband or your wife, you think you are both not on the same page, and then you just want to pray, and he's not praying, or she's not praying, the best you can do, and that is the type of prayer God will answer speedily, is interceding for your spouse. Are you with me now? You know, hey, my spouse has said, God, no, hmm. Start, let me pray. God, open doors for me. My work is this. My this is this. My this is this. And you are living as a spinster or bachelor in your marriage. It shows total lack of knowledge. Begin to intercede. Let me tell you, prayer of intercession is like when you are using a rocket. It goes straight to heaven. I love what happened to Daniel. He so said, from the first day, you know when the angel came to him, he said, from the first day you prayed. Because it was a prayer of intercession for his nation. From the first day. Because before you start to intercede, you've lost that person. So prayer of love goes, because God is love. It does open the door. It opens the key. So most of people say, prayer is the key. Let's go. Let's go. Hey. 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 Prayer is... That prayer is a prayer of love. It's not a prayer of selfishness. It's not a prayer of guilt. It's not a prayer of saying, Lord, you know this person did this, of reporting. No, it's a prayer that, hey, God. Like Jesus, he said, pray for your what? Enemies. Before you would kneel and say, Lord, I'm praying for my enemies. It's because you have lost them. You have forgiven them. Because maybe someone has a question, Pastor, what if that my enemy is my spouse? You've not heard that before. And we will even go, you know, the confusion will increase. You now go on the mountain. And as you're about to kneel down, you know, you even give the scenario very well. As you're about to kneel down before the prophet, you say, ah! Hmm. The person that is supposed to be drinking sweet orange, they are giving sour orange. <laughs> they are giving sour orange to you. You deserve a sweet orange, honey. Ah. Where is your husband, woman? See, where is your wife? Ah, she's the one. And you, you will get up. You go home. 
and then you, are, you now have enough muscle to say you want to deal with your enemy. And God will sit and laugh. Because sometimes you ask certain questions, but I prayed and I was convinced she was the one who was the one. The problem is knowledge. I love what Psalm 11 verse 3 and 4 says. It said, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? He said, the Lord is in his holy temple. The solution is here. He is in the temple, the congregation of his children. They are the best, that can at best through God give you the right knowledge. Maybe your marriage, you don't even know what's next. What I'm about to say to you is to prepare you and also help you to correct what is next for your marriage. Either single, either married, either about to be divorced or even separated, whatever position you occupy right now. One thing I know is that there is always a solution. And let's go to the book of Luke chapter 2. We'll be doing that together. And as I was reading it, I felt so much, so much fire in my hands and even in my bones. And I know let's go, Luke. Let's go to the book of Luke. Are we not projecting it? Let's go. Are we not projecting it? Luke chapter 2, from verse 1. It's about the marriage of Cana in Galilee. Maybe I should read from here. If you are with your Bible, please let me know so that we can go quickly. Wait, it's not Luke. Okay, John, sorry. John chapter 2. Let's go. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Let's go. Who was there? Mother. You can see how powerful mothers are. Let's, let's, let's read here. Let's go. So if you are married and you are always against your mother-in-law, you don't know the power of your mother-in-law. You don't know. You don't know. They are very powerful. You should honor them. You should love them. You should cherish them. You should be their daughter. You should be their wife. You should be uh, their, their, their child. You should be their best. And you can't do that without communication. Are you with me? Let's go. Now, both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servant, whatever he says to you. When I read that, I said, it, takes, it must be the clarity of what that woman understood. Of what they know. There are certain things that mothers know about their children. That until you get close to them, they will not tell you. Are you with me? So that you don't run in error. Sometimes you will go before you just learn to know who they are. From, you will know the, the culture of a family from the mothers. The fathers might not say a word. That demonic, hmm, well done, Pele. 
Je vais te dire, je te dire. But mother says, like, hey, what do you, do you understand? From one thing or that, you begin to understand their pattern of thought. So you know if this is a family you should go to or not. Mothers hardly, hardly pretend. I hope you know. If they don't like you from nursery, you will know. So you just pick, pack your bags and... But once they love you, you will know. Because even if the son is still trying to think, they know a way to influence that other Oh, mother, that love you. Mother, color, don't let her go. Do you understand? This, don't go. And from the beginning, if you have someone like that, you're good. Amen. Amen. But some mothers don't know the power they even have. Or some know it, but they don't know how to appropriate it. And they don't know that the secret of still owning that power is giving it away to their daughter-in-law. It's trusting and really loving. And he reco- she recognized that, said, well, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Let's go. Said, now there were, set, there were set there six water pots of stone. This is where I'm going. According to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Let's go. Jesus said to them, after he told the mother he was not going to do anything, when I said, whatever he tells you to do, do it, right? So Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with, and they filled them up to the brim for the first time. I said, why water? Why water? There is no one on earth that does not use water. There is no one on earth that does not have access to water. See, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The world seemed to be heading to a confused way or pattern of marriage. But do you know that God will use water to bring newness to your home? Water in, in, in the place, in the case of common sense. Because the problem is very difficult does not mean the solution has to be gang the solution has to appear like macho, like, hey, Captain America. It doesn't have to appear that way. Trust me. Listen to this. The solution to your marriage is common sense. The solution to it is in a place of really sitting and saying, God, you understand marriage. Can you show me how to turn this water to wine? New wine. No one could have thought that these guys drank water and they said it tasted more than the wine they took. Because a solution came forth out of a very difficult situation. Because the the, the bride and the groom were about to be put to shame. And not only them, even their family members. I don't know how many of you have felt that way. Maybe you attended a marriage, a wedding, and then over time, maybe two, four, five years, they later said that they are not together. How do you feel? Especially when you attended the, the church wedding. You know, you'll be there, they will tell you, stretch forth your hands and pray for them, right? This home will not scatter, right? Yes. <laughs> flow, flow, yeah. This home will not scatter, this, this, and then at the end, you are wondering, what? Huh? And I was part of this wedding. I'm no, I'm, I don't know if you felt that, that before. knowledge common sense of please sorry thank you common sense of truly not doing what you have apologized for again because that is what ends most people say ah, your sorry can save your marriage but it's a sorry that is meaningful and what makes sorry meaningful is not doing what you said you would not do Again. So the depth of that story is what gives it the new wine. Because sorry might be the common sense, right? But the depth of it is that you have a changed attitude. We can, it can be evident that truly, oh, you are sorry, and truly you want newness. Truly you want a new way. If we go further, let's say, it said, fill the water pot. Today the Lord will fill your home with love. 
in the name of Jesus. It will fill your home with wisdom. In the mighty name of Jesus. It will fill your home. Trust me, they didn't have to go the way of making wine. Getting grapes, right? And trying to make wine. So sometimes, the knowledge you have garnered over the years might not be what to sustain your marriage. Are you with me? It might not be the knowledge that you need at that time. So when you are saying that, I know I've been brought up, I know how marriage is, I know how it is, that's why it is how it is now. Those who got that will get it. If truly you know how marriage works, then how, why is your marriage like this? Why are you not happy? Why is your spouse not happy? If truly you've done all that you need to do, why? Then that means what you knew how to do is not working. That means you must get knowledge. So wisdom is the principal thing. In all your gettings, get what? Get understanding. Get the understanding of this marriage. Call your husband. Call your wife. Can we talk? How will this work? Because it must work. People say marriage is hard work. Part of the hard work is that people find it difficult to sit and talk about their marriage. They can talk about any other thing. They can talk about their gist, their friends, their football, everything. Say, ah, me and my husband, we bond, gone, we bond, gone. But you are not talking about how you grow your marriage, your children, your parenting style, the values you have in your home. What are the people you allow in your home? What are the things you don't allow? Do you understand? Coming together in agreement. How do we discipline them? How do we train them? How do we teach them? Because children will go wayward when they notice that they are... Daddy is thinking this way. Mom is thinking this way. So if daddy says yes, mom is likely to say no. So if it's to gratify whatever they need at that time, they will go to who will say yes to it. They are the best psychologists. They know. So why you think you are the one training them? They are the ones training you. <laughs> Teaching you how to really begin to observe. Changes. And God said in the book of Malachi, he said, I want nothing from you, you know, but godly children. It says godly parents to raise godly children. And one of your godliness is a sense of humility. Humility in being that you are teachable. You can listen to your wife when your wife says that, hey, guy, you are going this way. This is not good. Then you listen. He's being teachable. You can't say that you want to base it on the knowledge of your culture before we get to the culture of the kingdom of God. The culture here is that Especially Southwest or even African, I know the man is the anything he says, even if the man is stupid. A stupid man will give stupid ideas, stupid instruction. How do you want to manage that? How do you want to go about it? Same thing with women. Said a foolish woman will, with her own hands do what? Pull down. Are you not the one who has pulled down your house? Sometimes you can't control your mouth. Mary was a woman who could control her mouth. The Bible said that she kept all these things in her heart. Say, ah, let me say it as it is. Oh. As it's hot. Give it to me, I give it to you. I'm not a child that will go home and bring answer. I have the answer with you now. What call me dad, I'm Obeko. What, what training were you given? To be rude? To not know how to control your tongue? Is that being trained? Is that a training? Not to be able to know what to say? The Bible said that let the words of your mouth be seasoned with salt. But all in salt are found on your lips. Salt is missing. And yet the Bible said that you are the what? Salt of the earth. If you are salt of the earth, let it start from your home. Your attitude. Do you think there are no things you are supposed to address? Look at yourself. Sometimes it's very easy to point at your partner. He did this, she did this to me. But you have your own. John 17, 17 says, be perfect. I think that, that's what it says. Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Or there's another one. Be ye perfect. No, 5, 548. Matthew 548. Say, be ye perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. That means you are working towards what? Perfection. You are on that journey to it. 
So as you are walking towards perfection, your spouse is also what? Walking towards perfection. So Apostle Paul said, give allowance for each other's fault. Your husband is not perfect. Your wife is not perfect. Even if you think you are the one with the greater sin, she is still not perfect. He is still not perfect. I am weak. You should know that is my weakness. I don't like it. My dear, stop boasting in your weakness. Address your weakness to strength. Turn into it. You've done SWOT analysis and your weakness remains your weakness. You have not moved. That means you have not moved forward. Do you understand what I'm saying? How many of us know SWOT analysis? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You did it this year. It's the same thing that showed up as weakness. You are going to do it next year. Same thing will show uh, uh, until you are not growing. See, so, yeah, I know my weakness, and you let you let it be. The reason why you are doing that sort of that is so that you can address the weakness. I say, she knows my 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 weakness is hunger. I cannot control myself. Ah, you mo- <laughs> people should run away from you because it shows you are like wildfire. You know, Lord, you know, learn. <laughs> can't control yourself, and you want to control others, you want to control your own, that cannot be possible. Are you with me? That cannot be possible. And you tell me you are a man, but it is whatever mommy says you are doing. Are you a man or a boy? A boy has gotten married. Whoa, whoa, whoa to that kind of marriage, because... That's a lot. Are you expecting your wife to start training you? You don't put the responsibility of your parents on your spouse. Singles, are you listening? Begin to train. If you know you are not properly trained, begin to, to embrace teaching, embrace knowledge, embrace the, how to do marriage. Because let me start find somewhere as long as I can know how to cook. No, you must know how to cook that marriage. You must really be ready. You must start preparing for it. So that it is, it, it is a journey that when people start, they give them certificates. The reason why, have you noticed? It's not after 10 years or 20 years that, oh, it's like you people cannot do marriage. You come and collect your certificate. It's from that day because it's expected that you have gathered enough knowledge for it and you are prepared and ready for it and you are a professor of marriage before you collect that certificate. So most of the time, when you are married, get married, it's not even Mr. and Mrs. It's Professor... Tony and Professor Tola that are getting married. Why is it who's professor? They are professor of marriage. Because you must be able to do it successfully. Said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother. Man. If a man is beside, they say, are you man enough? Some people cannot say it. Are you sure you are ready for marriage? And what now? I know some people will start hiding. The things that normally they will say that, ah, let me call mommy to ask mommy. <laughs> they will say it, but they will say ask mommy. How will you recognize pretense? Because that's pretense. It will start from the PF that PF has exposed us. Amen. The pillar of your marriage is your mindset. And I hope we've been able to change a lot of perspective to these things. You've heard a man is polygamous in nature. Who brought that up? Who is the custodian of that knowledge? Of that quote? Sometimes you will see quotes also. Life is beautiful, right? Life is good. And then some will define life is not fair. Life is not balanced. <laughs> Who defined it? And same way, how do you define yourself? Jesus' mother knew who he was. And so he called out that gift out of him. You are not who you are right now. You are not just attending a wedding. You are not just attending marriage. You are not just attending anything. You are not just attending life for attending sake. 
The reason why a lot of marriages are hitting the rock is the low self-esteem that many people go into marriage with. Low self-esteem means that they do not have a full definition of themselves before they go into that marriage. Do you know that naturally some women are not humble? Is your low self-esteem coupled with knowledge that you lack that makes you humble? And then you begin to see, I think this man is wiser than me, but you have wisdom. Said a wise woman builds a house. You must be wise. You are capable of wisdom. Say to yourself, I'm capable, especially women. Oh yeah. Say, I am capable of wisdom. I'm capable of wisdom. Because some will come to the altar, the men they are joined, they just drop their wisdom, they drop their brain. And they go on the journey of whatever you say, my Lord. Hallelujah. And even if it is a journey that will head, end up in penury, whatever you say, my, <laughs> my Lord, my Lord, amen. Low self-esteem. Do you know who you really are? Can your spouse even say it? That this is who you are. What have you accepted that is not yours? Until you are restored to that beginning, to that person that God created with his mind towards you. I love Psalm 139. If you get home, you can read it. He said, while I was being woven together, while every, you knew everything about me, God will reveal yourself to you. And so you don't do marriage the way you should not do it. Intimacy with yourself is what will cast um, a vision or a, uh, uh, a picture of who you are on other relationships. Do you set a time out every day to even think about your life? To even think of what God has said concerning you, not what other people are saying. Some people are in abusive relationship. They are not married though. Abusive relationship because of low self-esteem. Some people have settled for less because of low self-esteem and pressure. I am of marriage with, but you know that what is in you is greater than this man you are about to be joined with but you end up that way. So when you begin to have problem in your marriage, you say, Egba mio. Amen. Amen. Because a man that does not understand who you are cannot allow you to shine as who you are. Are you with me? There is a new wine. A new wine has to do with the fact that you do away with the old or you have exhausted the old. Can you ask for new wine in your life? The one that Christ would bring. If we read that passage further, John chapter 2. The master of the ceremony said, where did you get this wine? So when the master of the feast had tasted the water, do you see what they said? The what? the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from. But the servants who had drawn the water knew. That means not that Jesus touched it and he drew al Kada Bradra. I even saw one video recently that that person and they are turning uh, this is not the situation. This is not the time of turning water to wine. If your wine finished at the wedding, what will you do? You will go and buy you don't need to start saying, it is, it, it is telling us that even when your marriage seems to have hit the rock, when it seems to have shattered, when it seems there is no hope, Jesus can give you hope. Jesus can give you that solution. Jesus can shake the foundation and relay it. Jesus can make your man a new man, can make your woman a new woman, can make your children new children. He can restore totally. 
maybe you even know you are not that one that is ready. Oh, your life has been in shambles. You have gone through a lot. And you know that if you go into this marriage with this kole, kole, it cannot work. Lord, make me anew. Renew me, O oh God. Restore me. You have been influenced of so many things, so many thoughts about marriage. You are even afraid of marriage. Today, that fear disappears in the name of Jesus. She will be attracted to the man that God has ordained. See, when they say write the list of the man that you want, you say tall, dark, and it's beyond that. And it looks as if it's been elevated more than the real values, than a man that should really be restored to his proper position. The man the Bible is talking about, apart from oh, listening to mother, you must be a man who can hear God. Say so that God made man, what? In his own image, after his likeness. He has to be in that restoration. And that's why I always encourage people, go for therapy before you marry. Go for it. You can't go in damaged like this and you say, you want to do what? You want to be joined. And you're expecting to have a marriage that will stand. People who bring their first food forward, they have served the best wine already. So that man looks like it. What, excuse me. That man looks like it. What they were what? They were dating. The lady looks like it. She understands it with just gel, like jello. A gel gone. Before, before I say it, he knows what I want to say. So she, she just, it's like her heart is just knitted together. Surely this is the bone of my bone. It is not when you are cutting that, you know, surely this is the bone of my bone. Not just then. I prayed, I saw, I was drawing water from the well, and it just came to help me. It shows you are my helper. I will not draw water with you from the well. There is tap now. There is tap. Ah! Rain was falling, I was, and you just came with umbrella. Rah, rah. There is car, there is jet now. Let me see you produce that car and jet. Don't bring me under. What are we building from scratch? <laughs> Let me see what you can do. I too can do something. Amen. Amen. We don't have to start in penuries because when we know how to make money individually, by the time we come together, we'll know how to multiply it. Even if we lose money, both of us will come together again. <laughs> Let's, do you understand? That, that means you will not have problem even financially. Amen. 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 So finances can be resolved. I don't know why my week is just going back. Don't worry. I'm fine. All right? Finances, at that point, finances will be, sex will be resolved. Do you know it's not only singles that watch porn? Do you know? I'm going to share my story with you next week on that. Sometimes some people go through what we call postpartum depression. But if you are a man and you don't know, you might not know, you just wonder, but my wife was not like this before we got married. Do you understand? She was not like this. She, she didn't know. She's, it's, it's not easy. You carry a baby and then you have breastfeeding first time you have breast. Do you understand different things? Mothers, are you here? Teach us. Let us hear. And then you have the first, you have the second, you have the third, and they are going through a lot. And somebody just got married who was coming back from a lot, did not do therapy, and now is going through a lot. So a lot jammed a lot. And, and it became... A lot jam a lot and he became, let me see the creative people. Over lots, extreme lots. It became lotful. And that, honestly, that's the reality. That's actually the reality. Because sometimes you just wonder. You might even ask yourself, how did I get my how did I find myself here? First two, three years, sometimes some people want to run out of their marriage. It might not even be the spouse. They'll say, I know I'm the problem. Let me just, I, I don't want to involve this man in this matter. I don't want to involve this woman in this matter. 
because there hasn't been a restoration of who you were before you get married. It has to do with wholesomeness. People will bring their best foot forward, but Jesus will make it continue with the best wine and a new wine in the name of Jesus. Can you pray? For singles that desire marriage, I won't just say marriage should be delivered to you. What I will pray for you right now is that the Lord will prepare you for marriage as he's preparing your spouse in the name of Jesus. I say you will not be a victim of half-baked man. You will not be a victim of half-baked woman in the mighty name of Jesus. Hmm. It's not about title. It is not about title. I'm saying it again. Maybe there's someone here you are already looking forward to marrying a pastor. I will just ensure you go through therapy before you go ahead. Important. Therapy is different from counseling. I hope you know. And for the marriage, while I was praying this morning and he said to say it again, my God, the newness that is going to blow into your home will be like that as if you are just getting married. In the name of Jesus, the excitement that will blow through your home, the love that will blow through your home, the fire of love that will consume the altar of your marriage, in the name of Jesus, will be like that of a new wine. In the name of Jesus, that will excite people and men will see your home and they will begin to say, hey, this must be a model for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, so shall it be. Oh, my libro zutaba shataya gadosha. I pray for the grace of understanding. Mariko sotoma jiprehenda le gadosha. The Bible says that for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The spirit of a sound mind. The spirit of love. The spirit of power. Rest upon your home in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit will do what only he can do. Something you have written off, he said he's starting again with you from the beginning. And he will grant you wisdom in the name of Jesus. One of our prayers for every family in Grace Family is that it will never hit the bottom row. It will never. No home in this family will scatter in the name of Jesus. As Otaba Shatter, I fortify every home against the walls of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, I fortify all marriages. No bone of contention will scatter your home in the name of Jesus. Every pillar of your home, Marazutaba Shka and Legedosa, Izozutabashki, Ingedusa, Evre Sutaba Shataya, those ones that said they have mouth over your home, they are speaking what the Lord has not spoken. Today, I stand on the rock of ages and in the name of Jesus, and I silence them in the name of Jesus. I silence them in the mighty name of Jesus. Your home read. Receive newness. You will see your husband. You will see a new man. You will see your wife. You will see a new woman. You will see your children. You will see new children. In the name of Jesus, as many rejoice at the birth of a new child, so many will rejoice at the birth of your home. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That you expose weaknesses and weaknesses will be dealt with headlong. In the mighty name of Jesus, great grace abounds. I say the grace of God upon this home rests upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not miss it. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare you will not miss it. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord.